Welcome to this episode of Gunman. So this video here is part four on the Nissan S14 drift car that we've been doing. The previous three videos have taken you right through painting the inside of the roll cage in white, painting the engine bay in the ready pinky color, also doing all of the panels, clear coat and base coat in a four stage paint job. We've then done the body, including the three colors on that. So we did green up the back, yellow candy in the center, for a racing stripe and then we've done blue on the entire front of it and now we're ready to do our clear coat. I'm using a bit of a mixture of different products here. Some people may agree with me that it is fine to do, some people may disagree, but um, I've mixed a couple of different clears together and I'm even using a concept hardener. So most of the clear that's in there is Metalux Platinum Clear, which is technically it's an MS clear, but it is like one or two microns away from being a HS clear. So it's quite thick and there's also a lot of diamond clear in there which is a HS clear and that's very thick as well. We also just uh, finished off this other can that was some uh, concept clear. Um, look, all in all, I was pretty amazed at the finish that I got with it. Um, and there is nothing wrong with doing it. The proof's in the pudding. It held an amazing gloss considering how heavy I put it on, there was no solvent boil at all um, and it really did dry out quite nicely. Again you guys may have noticed that I'm pull I pulled the clear can straight out of the hot water that's in those buckets so I just um, boiled the kettle, put that into the buckets and then dropped the entire clear can in there to get some warmth into it and also get some warmth into that hardener. Now since making this video I've actually ordered in and had a digital thermometer arrive. So in the following videos that I do, um, it's cold down here in Australia at the moment and it's only gonna get colder in the next month or two. So I'm gonna be able to give you guys an idea of exactly how hot I'm getting my clears to and um, exactly the panel temperatures and stuff like that. There's only really one thing that you're battling with when you're painting in the cold. It's pretty simple, it's heat. Now, if you can't get heat out of your booth or out of your panel, what's the next obvious thing to do? Get heat out of your paint. And it's really quite simple once you think about it, but if you don't know it, you don't know it. Um, get as much heat as you can. I've got that kettle, just boil it and boil it and boil it. Get heat into those cans, tip out the water because it's gonna cool down and put hot water in there again. At a guess, I would say this paint is sitting around the 50 degrees even. So that's had a couple of um, bonuses to it. It's thinned it down without putting any reducer in it. So it's basically keeping the body. As soon as you put thinners into your clear coat, you're actually breaking it down. And over the years, I have found that the jobs that I do with heated clear and no reducer do come out much better off the gun finishes than the ones that I put thinners in because um, you will lose a little bit of gloss. Now 50 degrees may sound very hot also using fast hardener. Some people might be scared that it's gonna go off in the gun, but don't worry, you do have at least a two hour pot life even with the clear at that temperature. One thing to be wary of when you're using high solids clear and heating them up as I am in this video here, um, you may have the correct viscosity once it's at 50 degrees, um, but obviously it's going to be a cold day, so it's not really going to take that long for that clear to cool back down. So if you're giving it, say, 5 or 10 minutes in between coats, see if you can find a way of getting that clear back into the um, hot water in between coats, just to keep it at that um, nice temperature, or else it will just go too thick. I've had it before happen, um, using a HS clear, and it's nice and warm, it'll spray really nice. Left it five minutes in between coats because I wanted it to tack off nicely to get that second coat on over the top of it rather than sort of that second coat melting into the first coat. Um, and then coming back to it without keeping it warm in between coats, it's cooled back down and it's gone very thick. Um, so I had to put a bit more reducer in it and in doing that you're probably um, heightening the risk of getting runs also because it's going to be a bit colder as well. So um, if you can try and keep that uh, clear warm in between coats. Um, obviously being extremely careful if you're using the uh, water method that you don't get any water into the clear. You can do that with all your base coats and stuff like that if it's really cold and 
and an extra couple of degrees is going to make a big difference to you well then um, you can heat up your base coats and primers anything like that so next up I'll give you guys a run through the gun settings I'm using the gun is obviously the Sardajet 5000 BRP 1.3 mil fluid tip on it and it's the digital model as well. I've got the fan wound right open and then I come back about a quarter of a turn, if not just a touch less than a quarter of a turn on that fan control, which is the one on the left there. Um, and then with the fluid settings, I had it set previously to about two and a half turns out. But when I was doing this job here, I just ended up coming out another full turn. So I'm actually set at three and a half full turns out with the fluid. And I've actually also upped the pressure a little bit. So I've actually got it right up to 1.3 bar of pressure. And I've found my jobs are coming out a little bit better doing it like that. Also, using a high solid clear enables you to smash a bit more clear on without having to worry about it dulling off. Also, as I mentioned before, not having reducer in there does also help, especially on this job here where I had those 200 micron flakes that I was trying to bury with the clear coat. So if I had have used an MS clear and put reducer in it, it would have looked much worse. Um, and if I had have had that uh, fluid wound in too much, it just wouldn't have ended up pumping enough clear onto the job to um, help me fill up those flakes. So to finish this video off, I've decided I'm going to do a bit of a Q&A. Some of the recent questions I've been getting, I'm going to run through and answer them. Sometimes it's easier for me to just uh, talk about it and I can probably go a little bit more in depth when I'm uh, in a video rather than sitting down for 20 minutes, half an hour answering all these questions. Okay, so first question was a guy's planning on doing a respray in his garage and he's asking me whether or not 2k paint needs to be baked or not. Answer is no, it doesn't need to be baked. It will cure overnight. But on the other side, would I paint in my garage at home on a full respray? Answer is no. For what it's worth, if you're doing a full respray on your car and you want it to look really nice, hire yourself a spray booth. There's places around that do it. You've also got environmental health and safety issues. I wouldn't like my next door neighbor spraying two pack paint while my kids are running around in the backyard. It's not healthy. Paint is also highly flammable, so you've got to be very careful of any ignition sources. Paint is also very expensive, and if you don't have the correct air filtration system, there's a good chance that the job will turn out pretty bad. You could end up getting humidity blisters, oil in the paint, water coming through the airlines. So basically, the setup would cost you probably more than what it would to hire a spray booth out, and the job would come out much better in a spray booth as well. That's just my opinion anyway. I'm not your neighbor, I'm not the local health and safety officer. I don't really care what you do, but that's my advice. So that's our first coat finished off of clear coat. As you can see here, there's quite a lot of uh, little high spots, little pimples, and all that really is, is those flakes poking up through, which actually brings me to the next question. A guy here, Race Diagnostics, asked me a question. If I get a lot of dust in my base coat, do I denib it out or do I just try and bury it with clear? Now, you've got to take it on a job by job basis. If it's just one or two little bits of dust, you might just say try and bury it with the clear. But if you've got an extreme amount of dust in your base coat or any colored specks, for instance, say if you're doing a black and you get a white spot in it, well then you're going to have to either give that a quick sand back then another coat of color over the top or just put another coat of color over the top if it's not too bad and you think it's going to be able to bury with the clear but look one thing that you cannot get from watching all of my videos is experience and what makes a tradesman a good tradesman a good tradesman is experience so I can do my best to give pointers and stuff like that but you really got to get out there and paint some shit you got to stuff shit up you've got to get runs you've got to get dust all through your paint job to know and trial and error to see what works for you um, I've changed my painting styles quite drastically over the years from tack ragging base coat to not tack ragging base coat um, I've actually ended up finding that not tack ragging base coat can end up with a cleaner job most of the time which is why these days 99% of the time I will not tack rag the base coat but that's another option if you do get some small bits of dust in your base coat 
sometimes they do just tack rags straight out without even having to sand them down. Next question I'm going to be answering is by Adam Kun, and the question was whether or not it's okay to do a spot repair blend type of a thing with 2K paint, so direct gloss 2-pack. And my answer to that is not recommended, unless you're going to do it in clear over base. You can do solid, say for instance a solid white blend, but as long as you put clear coat over the edge where you're going to be polishing, well then there's less chance of that showing back main reason being is the color match because if you've matched a color and it's slightly out you're going to see the color difference as much as anything whereas your clear is obviously see-through and you won't get that color difference there although i do know how to do good spot repairs it's really not recommended you are much better off doing the entire panel and that was the advice that i replied to that uh, question with it's not always possible to do the entire panel sometimes people just want to keep the prices down and they just want to quick fix something that looks better than what it is okay so next question was from mark woodbridge youtube user just a quick one he said i see you checking your paint viscosity with the mix mixing stick what are you looking for so basically, over the years, well, you know, 15 years I've been doing this for, you just get an eye for what the viscosity should be. I do have a video on how to correctly mix up uh, through a viscosity cup, but it's not really necessary. In practice, no one ever uses it. Um, over time, you will just get the hang of how quick that paint should drip off the stick. Um, and if it's a little bit too thick, then just put a little bit more thinners in it. Um, if it's too thin, well, yeah, you either got to wait for it to cool back down if you've done the heating trick, or there's not much else you can do to uh, make it thicker. And to be honest, 99% of the time when I'm mixing base coat up, I don't even look at the actual mixing ratio to thinners to base coat, because I will know when I've got it at the sweet spot. I like to sometimes leave it a little bit thicker to get my first couple of coats on. It will help you get coverage. And then on the last coat, sometimes I'll put a dash more thinners in it. Because I've found if you have your base coat too thick, well then um, it'll go very chunky and you won't actually get the nice metallic uh, effect at the end. Okay, so next question here is what is the proper amount of clear to paint a Integra and how much hardener do you recommend? Well, it's not about me recommending an amount of hardener, it's what uh, the manufacturer recommends you put in. So you've got specific mixing ratios that you're meant to mix your clear coat to. Most of them I've found are two to one, so two parts clear to one part hardener. And when I do a respray, I usually just order a clear kit. So they usually come in a 7.5 litre kit, which is 5 litres of clear and 2.5 litres of hardener. Again, that's going to vary. Some companies do a 4 litre to 2 litre. And that would usually do an entire car. So that would do inside and out most of the time on a 4 door sedan. So you'd usually get inside all your doors done, inside bonnet and boot lid and the entire exterior done with a 7.5 litre kit. So if you're just doing the exterior of a car, yes you will be left over with a few litres but in a workshop environment that clear coat is not going to go to waste. You'll be able to use the leftovers on the next job. Um, for at home use and if you've only got that one job that you want to do, well you're just going to have a bit of paint left over. And look, there's clears out there that are really expensive. Um, this actually takes me to another question that I was asked from a guy from the UK. He said, what is your favorite clear, best like top of the line, if money wasn't an issue, it would have to be one of two clears. Um, it would be the Glazerat 255 HS clear or the Glazerat 109 nano clear. I used both of those clears at a BMW shop that I worked at and the shop ran an entire Glazerat system unbastardized so they didn't use any inferior primers anything that didn't have the glazeret stamp on it and i still remember back in those days they were some of the best paint jobs i've ever done it was a different booth to this it was a water floor booth full downdraft system it had the uh, sticky booth coating pro cabin on the walls which is actually where i got onto that uh booth coating and it's great um, I will go further into detail on spray booths in a separate video. I've been uh, collecting some footage um, from the previous place I worked and this uh, spray booth here. 
and it's going to come when it's time for me to service this boot. So I'm not just going to jump the gun, I'm just going to wait until this one needs a service. I'll make a video of that while including all the info that I can on all the different kinds of spray boosts that there are on the market. So on to the next question is by Stress Test. After shooting base coat, how long can you leave it before you put your clear coat or another coat of base coat on? I've always been told 24 hours is the recommended window. So if you leave it any longer than 24 hours, you probably really should give it a scuff back, say with an 800 uh, soft pad or something like that. Put another coat of base coat over it and then get your clear coat on as soon as it's flashed off. I'm sure all that info is in the technical data sheets, but hey, who reads them? Next one I'm on to is more of a comment than a question. I'm sorry you are not a profi painter by Mark King. There you go, mate. You've made it into one of my videos. I don't even know what profi means. You could be referring to professional, but if 15 years and a lot of success being told I am the best painter that my previous boss has ever had work for him, then quitting a job that I was on $45 an hour to go and start my own business doesn't classify me as being a professional, well then I don't know what would Mark King you douche. Next question was on my video amazing trick for a paint run, the one where I got some two pack body filler, put it over quite a decent sized run, sanded it back and then polished it up. Now the question was, could you do this on base coat? And my answer would be no, I wouldn't recommend putting body filler over your base coat. Um, you shouldn't be getting mega runs in your base coat anyway. If you are getting big runs in your base coat, you really need to look at your application techniques. In the 15 years I've been doing this, I would probably say I've only had a handful of runs in base coat and that's just in uh, a tiny little one in a corner because you really shouldn't be putting your base coat on wet enough to get it to run. Now the question I had is could you please do a review on your sandpaper system? Absolutely, that will be coming in the future. Just don't forget that these videos don't edit themselves and I do have to do a lot of research before getting into a video like that. I don't want to go and give any misinformation, but stay tuned for reviews on all of that kind of stuff. There you go. So this is a job just about finished off. Giving you guys a quick look over it. Um, you can see that I really did pump that clear on quite heavy, and it has actually done quite a good job at filling up those flakes. Hang around for a couple more minutes. I'll give you guys a look at it out in the sun. Well, not the most amount of sun, but... Um, it's outside and it gives you a bit of a better look at those hologram flakes that I've put in it. I really didn't put much in. It was one liter of intercoat, which is basically the clear base coat that you can mix your pearls and stuff with. Um, and then all it was was three teaspoons of those DNA hologram flakes. As always, be sure to leave your questions in the comments section down below. I may not get back to you in the comment as such, but hey, as you've noticed in this video, I may get back to that topic in the next video. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram, Facebook, Vine, Twitter, and all that stuff. I can't even remember. That is also in the description of my videos, which I do recommend reading because I do include a bit of the technical info in a description of all of my videos. I sit down for another 10 minutes after making each video while I'm uploading it and do a bit of a write-up on it, which I might even start doing some weekly blogs, which I've got my own website now. I'm not really over-advertising it. However, stay tuned in the next few months and I'll be publishing that website and maybe do some weekly blogs and see what you guys think of that. So stay tuned for loads more great videos. Who knows what the future's going to hold with the gunman, but I'm really enjoying what this channel's become in the first year and a half, and I'm really enjoying work. Don't worry guys, if you've been waiting for more videos on the VL, it will be coming soon. There it is, the red one in the background. I've been putting a turbo on it lately, had a little bit of an issue with it. We're gonna have to pull it back out and put some seals through it, but stay tuned for more on that. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.